Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Ring Respect Radio right here on the Video Bros Network. Hey, we're back on the screen. I am Bobby Munson, and I'm joined, as always, by the man with the angelic voice. He is Pop Smoke. Sir, how are you doing this evening? Hey, Munson, I'm doing great, and I want to give a shout-out to all my wrestling people out there. Speaking of wrestling people, Pop Smokes, we've got news, and it's broke just today. Prairie Pro Wrestling coming back to live in-ring action in front of a crowd. It is going to be fucking insane. Loving it. Prairie Pro Wrestling presents Part 5, A New Beginning. It's going to be live Saturday, October 30th, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan at the Saskatoon Cosmo Senior Center. Tickets go on sale this Friday and should be available through any of our great sponsors, Bartari Video Games, Glitch Gifts, and Wendell Clark's Classic Bar and Grill. Yes, thank you to all of you guys for making it happen. And we're going to get to see you, the PPW Nation, back live in person for the PPW matches. God damn it, Papa Smokes. How are you feeling on this one? Yeah, Munson, I'm so excited. I've waited so long for this through quarantines and lockdowns and fear and strife and depression. And now we finally, this is the moment we finally get our PPW wrestling back. It's going to be sweet. So make sure you get your tickets in advance if you're going to be able to make the show. Keep in mind, COVID-19 protocols will be in place. This means, as per the current rules in the province of Saskatchewan, we will be adhering to mandatory masks at the indoor event. There is a limited number of tickets available, and we will be adhering strictly to that as well. Uh, Proof of vaccination or uh, proof of a negative test will be acceptable at the door as well. So come one, come all. Please be kind, be kind to each other, and enjoy some live in-ring wrestling. But hey, moving on from that, it's time for Ring Respect Radio and Papa Smoke. Speaking of returns, MLW has returned to in-ring action, and that is the topic of tonight's show. But before we get started, I want to let everybody know, thank you for joining in. Go ahead, click the subscribe button down below and give us a thumbs up. Hey, it only helps us out. It takes just a couple seconds out of your day to give us a like and a subscribe. So MLW Pop Smokes, they're back, they're hitting heavy, it's Fusion Alpha, so episodes one and two have hit as we lead into episode three coming up this week, and also Fightland, which is going to be on Vice TV as well. Big things for MLW and a wonderful set of shows that we get to finally get back to talking about here today and lots to unfold. Man, how exciting is it, MLW, back in action. Extremely exciting, and uh, I like the way they're doing their sets of shows now with uh, kind of like seasons with uh, little bits of time in between where the guys can take a break and such. But uh, as for uh, fans and uh, watchers of the product, I just like to have it back on. It's good to have the tapings in an arena again with fans, and that just feels like life is starting all over again. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so this episode of MLW Fusion Alpha, episode one, this started off with new MLW matchmaker Caesar Duran, the one we know as El Jefe that we talked about all last season, who came in at the end of the last MLW Fusion season. So again, anybody you're not familiar, uh, this man once uh, had a name going for himself, Dario Cueto, in Lucha Underground. He is now brought as Tekka Underground to the MLW fold. And this kind of was a little preview into a little bit of what Lucha Underground was doing interestingly right and stuff like that, these little video segments that Caesar Duran would be a part of over there. They brought that aspect over to the MLW show here. And I'm going to say, I like the way they kicked this thing off. I like Caesar Duran. He's quite the performer. I was happy to see that he was going to get to come back out and be part of MLW now. Uh, what did you think, Papa Smokes? Yeah, isn't Duran an interesting performer? He... Uh... He acts like an actor, but he's good at it, too. He looks like one of those villains in uh, in an old uh, 60s Hammer horror movie or something like that. He does it well. It suits uh, his role well. It, it works well on MLW TV. He's kind of uh, got a little bit of a heelish thing going on as the, uh, as the matchmaker that uh, has all the power and makes all the decisions. So all the wrestlers are coming to him looking to get what they want, and He's either going to give it or he isn't, and he does a good job here. Yeah, and you know what I did really like about his role in uh, Lucha Underground that I hope is going to carry over here is that he does have a bit of that heelishness to him, but at the same time, he's not the same kind of 
heel boss where it's they're always side with the uh, heel guys and always try to screw the baby faces. He's a little bit more devilish than that. And he's more about opportunity. So there is that aspect that if they bring it to the style that MLW presents on a regular basis, I think this blend will be very unique and him on screen will be a perfect blend for MLW. Yeah, he, the way he plays the heel is more of the office versus the wrestlers kind of thing. He uh, he holds that power over them. He he uh, makes everyone aware that there's a gulf between him and the and the talent on the roster too. So he's basically uh, wielding his power with an iron fist, and it'll make for some interesting matchmaking in the weeks and months to come. An interesting matchmaking indeed. And as uh, announced, it would be tonight that we would be seeing Davey Richards taking on TJP in the main event. What a great match that uh, Cesar Garan puts on the table for first night of Fusion Alpha. This is fantastic. These two have a lot of great history. We're going to talk about that from some video packages that play, some promos that come up. But yeah, just a quick one off. Um, these two go back to Impact Wrestling in their days there, and there's a lot of history between Davey Richards and TJP, so a lot of excitement that's going to come out of tonight's matchup. Yeah, they even mentioned that they had done some training together back in the early 2000s, so these guys have a history together. No strangers to each other. I'm expecting a great match. Yeah, definitely. So this one kicked off in a very interesting way, match-wise anyway. So we're starting with a tag team match, a bunkhouse brawl, the, you know, a gimmick match right off the top. And normally I would probably want to stick my nose up a little bit at a gimmick match, but hold on. It's the Vaughn Erics and a bunkhouse brawl. So the history there kind of negates that whole thing. It, it it works in that sense. And it didn't get too silly. And we'll talk about that as we get, go along here. But Team Filthy, consisting of Kevin Koo and Kit Osborne, a.k.a. Lance Von Eric, is it this week? Or? <laughs> well, I think he says he's the son of Lance Von Eric, so he's Rip Von Eric. That's it. There we go. <laughs> and uh, taking on Ross and Marshall, the uh, the Von Eric boys. I mean, this Kit Osborne, I mean, quite comical in this whole thing, too. It's a very nice little heel roll for him. I think he fits in so well with Team Filthy, personally. I think he him tom lawler kevin Koo, it works i'm surprised not to see dominic garini i'm not sure what the absence of him is all about the, i've seen some stuff about dominic garini recently he had some matches uh a couple of hardcore matches uh various places throughout the states he might just be busy with other bookings right now could be could be but yeah a nice uh, uh trio that came out and of course tom lawler gets on the microphone and what a clever, good old-fashioned heel promo this one was. And he has waited, what was it, 18 months to be in front of a real live audience. And unfortunately, he's still waiting, according to Tom Wall. Yeah. I couldn't stop laughing. I, I watched this thing through twice, and I think I laughed just as hard the second time. Yeah, the fans in Philly are a little bit wild to begin with. And uh, man, he had them worked up right off the bat here and well done on the microphone. Uh, he's just, a, he's a brilliant promo and great in ring technician. Uh, of course, we're going to get to see him on the next episode, but, uh, you know, he's fantastic. You know that. Um, and he does well backing up Kevin Koo and Kit Osborne here. I uh, didn't find himself too involved in the matchup, which is good. But let's, uh, let's talk about how this one started off. I mean, this one started off hot and heavy because this, feud kind of goes back quite a while between the Von Eriks and Team Filthy and the Von Eriks come out hot they're ready to just kick some ass they're we're going to take it to these guys and it starts off a little crazy goes to the outside a lot of a lot of work on the outside there a lot of things being done some things that were really interesting I liked when Kevin Koo grabs the shovel on the back of Ross's neck and does the old stomp on the back of it man that looked nasty and fun yeah, yeah, and they had all kinds of uh, props to do with bunkhouses and such, various wheelbarrows and shovels and spades and bags of hay and stuff, and uh, all of that stuff came into play at some point during this match. We knew this was going to be a wild one with the uh, stipulation of the bunkhouse brawl, and uh, like you said, this feud is, goes back a couple of years now, Team Filthy versus uh, the Von Erich family, and... Uh, and uh, I like this because uh, we also haven't seen uh, the Von Erichs really since Filthy Island, I think. Hey, Marshall Von Erich had had that uh, leg injury or knee injury, so he was rehabbed for a long time. This is like a, a return of sorts for the for the tag team uh, Von Erich brothers. 
Yeah, I think maybe they had one match at the end of the season last season there too, because there was the one yeah. with the uh, the uh, steel steel ropes at the end of last yeah. season or yeah. whatever. And then I think okay. they kind of play it on the fact that uh, again Mar- Marshall's leg or knee injury played up again. That was another factor, and again something that was worked on heavily by. Uh, Kevin Koo and Kit Osborne in this matchup, which I thought was absolutely clever, a good callback to that knee injury that they start to work. And again, the great announcing being done to reiterate to people who maybe are tuning in for the first time that that is why the focus is on Marshall's, I believe it's his right knee. Yeah. And uh, again, we have our good announcing team back too. It had been in a bit of turmoil towards the end of the last season, but now we have Rich Bukini and, uh, St. Laurent back and and they fit together well. They make a good team and I'm glad it's those two again. Yeah, I really like them as, as the team there. So great to see them back. And again, like I said, this one didn't get too out of hand again with the craziness or any of the stuff here that really can put some of these matches into disarray for me. Um, Lawler tried to get involved a little bit, but he ends up costing his team the match essentially when he goes and he takes that two by four and ends up clubbing Kevin Koo straight over the top of the head with it. And this really kind of sold towards the ending. And that was when the uh, Von Erics take control. And then they set up that absolutely ridiculous finish. Or I believe, was it Osborne that was in the bottom half or was he on the top half the, there? The coup was on the bottom. There we go. Yeah, man, that yeah. guy took a shit kicking on that one. So yeah. again, on the bottom, and then the plank of wood on the chairs, Osborne on top of that, and then I believe another plank of wood in between there, and Marshall Von Erich's big ass jumping off that top turnbuckle with the moonsault, of all things. And, man, he hit it perfectly. I mean, he couldn't have landed that move better. Yeah, I was I was thinking of Kevin Kua on the bottom underneath there. That had to be a scary <laughs> bump to take for sure, I I don't think he knew what was going to happen until it actually happened. But like you say, Marshall, very good, very safe worker and everything. uh, Delivered that moonsault very nicely and uh, had a good finish. It broke the plank in half and it looked like it broke both of uh, Team Filthy members in half as well. It really did. But what a move. Von Erich's coming out successful again. Probably the best thing. Again, you want to keep your tag team division strong. These are your your guys. They're, They're a top tag team. Uh, up there with you know you got uh la park or sorry los parks the tag team champions and stuff like that and building a great division again you've got injustice you have the 5150 coming in so again you want to keep the von erics hot because they are a top team top contenders for the tag team titles and ready to get in that title picture again uh so they pick up the big win and then we have a recap of what went down at the battle riot uh showing hammer going all the way between him and mods kruger in the final that's going to lead to this thursday night on vice tv we're going to get to see it championship versus championship hammer taking on fatu but again a wrench could be thrown into that plan we're going to find out here soon as well too so we'll talk about that in just a moment uh, from there, we had a promo featuring TJP, and this is what we started talking about earlier, going over the history between him and Davey Richards. Man, TJP sounds fired up in this promo. I really like this from him. He explains himself. He explains why it is that he's going to be better than Davey Richards, and I love that finish on this promo. I look forward to you tapping out. You couldn't have said it better, TJP. Well done promo by him. Yeah, yeah. I also taught marks for the uh... – statement where he made that uh, he would be concerned about the fans uh, feelings about him except that they write in crayon yeah that was awesome too loved it <laughs> just, a, I liked, just a great I liked both of these yeah yeah I liked both of these promos of uh, TJP and uh, Davey Richards because they weren't so much of promos of, of shouting and threatening and all that they were just give each gave a little bit of background and uh their outlook towards this match coming up. And it was kind of a nice change than the typical uh, wrestling promo. Both got their points over very well. I think TJP is very well-spoken and an arrogant bastard as well for the fans to dislike. Yeah, and people do genuinely dislike him and some of his personal thoughts sometimes. So, I mean, if he can continue to play the heel that he's playing, his in-ring work looks great. This guy could continue to rise, in my opinion. And uh, we're going to... Talk about that in a bit because this matchup has a lot to unfold. Uh, Before we get there, though, let's talk about the next segment on the show where we found out who's going to be part of the women's 
featherweight division in MLW. So they're going to create a women's featherweight world championship that is going to be presented. Uh, we don't know yet how it's going to unfold, who's going to like tournament style, what we're going to do to decide a champion. But here are some of the names and I had to look some of them up. I didn't know everybody's name that they dropped on this list. Not a problem with that though. At the same time, I kind of like when I see up and comers, people I'm not familiar with, then I don't have, you know, a bad taste in my mouth necessarily from previous work or anything. Uh, so first of all, the team of the sea stars consisting of Ashley Vox and pardon me if I don't ex uh, say this right, but Delmi Aixo, Aixo, something like that. I yeah, probably will get it right, right one day. But uh, they you know a tag uh, team. They've traveled the world. They've worked in places like Shimmer, Rise, Impact, ROH. They've had spots with. I mean, these two young, great stars. You know, this is a great thing. They got a tag team of all things coming in together. I mean, this is this is great news right there. Um, we'll go over the names here first, and then I'll get you to kind of uh, give your thoughts on them too here, Pop Smokes. But Brittany Blake, another one. Uh, yeah, been around since about 2013, so probably one of the more experienced uh, wrestlers that they're bringing to the table here, so interesting to see how she works out. Holodead, probably the biggest name that they dropped here, tag team partner of Thunder Rosa, uh, Zoe, uh, sorry, Zoe Sky. Actually, you know what, Zoe Sky's been around quite a while, 2007, and she's uh, really kind of just uh, getting out there now. Um, she's worked with Shimmer and Rise as well, too. Uh, she's going to be part of this MLW crew. Great to see what uh, unfolds there. Uh, Will, Willow Nightingale, who's uh, about six years in the business. Uh, again, Shine, Shimmer, Rise, those type of companies that she's worked for now coming over to also uh, be a part of the featherweight division in, for the women in MLW. And Nicole Savoy, again, another name, probably the other big name that's being announced. And again, these two taking on each other at MLW's Fightland. Uh, Nicole Savoy has worked for, you name them. ROH, WWE, Shimmer, Shine, AEW. She has had spots with just about everybody. And now she's bringing that talent to MLW. Papa Smokes, your thoughts on the list so far of women coming to MLW's women's division? Yeah, well, you must have done more research than me, months, And so you'll have to help me with a couple of these names. But I know a few of these ladies um, from the Sea Stars. You must remember Ashley Vox because she was on NWA when we used to uh, review that. And she looked like a pretty inexperienced and pretty new wrestler at that time now that's been a couple of years since then so uh we if she has a, a constant tag team partner that's a good thing and maybe we got a, a hot ladies team team here uh what about Brittany blake you said uh, that you looked up a bit of stuff about her i couldn't find a whole lot other than again Brittany blake has been around for quite uh, qu quite a while anyway at least 2013 i mean it seems like that's you know what eight nine years experience at this point that is getting up there doing pretty good for herself uh i couldn't i didn't have time to go see any matches and stuff like that i had read that her finishing move is actually some form of arm lock finisher so again i'm thinking that she's going to be a more technical wrestler which a plus there can't uh, get enough of that in professional wrestling today so looking forward to it again i have no real other knowledge of Brittany blake so i'm not sure what to think just yet excited to see what she brings to the table i i mean this could be great things for mlw yeah and that's that's good things for us as fans too in a way i don't want to know i'd rather just start watching some matches and uh see if she's uh comes out big in mlw but the next person here is holiday and i've watched a bunch of her stuff and i like her a whole bunch i know her uh, the most um well of all these uh female stars here and uh She's a beast. I mean, she's a, a bodybuilding, weightlifting beast. She's got the big legs and the big shoulders. Uh, she wears the scary face paint like uh, Thunder Rosa. They are friends and tag team partners. And uh, I think she's even had a stop or two in AEW recently, hasn't she? But uh, yeah. she's the real deal. She she looks like a lady wrestler that could kick anybody's ass. Which, which just, I'll interrupt for one second, like makes me wonder, adds to the question that if, They've got so many people, and a lot of them are doing spots with AEW from this list. So it makes me wonder if AEW and MLW won't be will or might be willing to share that talent. So could we eventually see an MLW card where we see Holodead teaming up with Thunder Rosa to take on, say, the Sea Stars or some of the another established women's tag team? Which I mean, that could be fantastic news. Whether it goes either way, I guess MLW or AEW's way. I mean, it really is a win-win for the fans more than anything. Yeah, I'm excited. The 
possibilities of crossovers now have, have opened up a lot and there's really only the the one major company that won't let its stars wrestle outside of its company so uh yeah anyone else it seems can pretty much go anywhere and they, like you say that only the fans win out of that one for sure yeah looking forward to it so again yeah going back to the list here pop smokes a couple more names on there yeah zoe sky i don't know her um um has a nice look is all i can say for this point uh, did you find out anything more about her again like i i'm clearly seeing baby face in, in this one uh, she's been around got the experience 2007 i mean that's that's quite a bit of experience inside the ring i've uh, done most of her work with you know like shimmer rise places like that uh, a lot of the uh, women's division leagues so she hasn't you know done a whole lot of spots outside you know to the major companies or anything like that so nothing that too many people will be familiar with. So again, this is a very experienced wrestler coming in with maybe not so many eyes having been on her on a television program and a great opportunity to put her in front of those fans, put her in front of the viewers on YouTube or on your vice television and stuff as MLW continues to rise. I could see Zoe Sky's star start to rise as well too. For sure. Uh, the, and the last two, uh, both of them I've seen on social media with some various posts of matches and pictures and such, but I don't know their work. Willow Nightingale also has a good look to her. She's got some size and some weight to her, so she'll be a, a more of a heavyweight in that featherweight division. And then uh, Nicole Savoy, I, I feel like I really should know her stuff. I think she's done a bunch of good stuff. And... Uh, yeah, I, I think that's one of the bigger names they've got there, too. Any more knowledge about her? I mean, there's there's a lot out her out there, sorry. But uh, she has been around for not a long time. Again, like probably around, I think, 2015-ish or something like that, making her pro debut. But again, she immediately rose. Uh, people love to watch her matches. They love her. They love her personality again. So again, people are starting to take notice. And again, this is a big grab for MLW because you look at it today, there is a lot of women out there in professional wrestling, but a lot of the big names have already been signed by some form of bigger company. They're tied up working with at the moment. So MLW had to grab a couple of, I would say, decent names. And Nicole Savoy, Holiday are definitely two of those names that they grabbed that I think are going to help usher in this division while the other ones continue to rise under the great tutelage of MLW and Court Bauer. Yeah, yeah. And I think this will be a, a work in progress also. I mean, they, they haven't had a ladies division yet. We got to see what direction they're going to take with it. We got to see the kind of booking and the kind of matchmaking that's going to go on with these uh, stars. We... I, I have the feeling they will add some more as well, or if they're going to have tag teams as well, they'll need to expand that roster too. And we'll see a batch, uh, a few more batches of signings probably uh, in this calendar year and in the over next year, as they continue to develop the featherweight division. Yeah. It's, it, it's great excitement as a fan to <clears> see this <throat> all unfolding. And we're going to get to watch a lot of these women uh, rise to the top in MLW. It's going to be a fantastic time. Uh, so moving on from there, we had another segment backstage with Caesar Duran. He is interrupted by Matt Cross, who then starts referencing referencing having worked for Caesar Duran previously. He says, "You changed your name, but you're still the same old guy, same old thing." Well, I mean, Matt Cross isn't one to talk because he's changed his name since the days of Lucha Underground. Son of Havoc, I've got I'm on to you. Uh, anyway, so he's saying that he is demanding a championship match because at some point in time, and I. I looked hard, Bob Smokes. I don't know who the fuck he's referencing that he'd be a former MLW champion at some point. I, I was trying to go through his career, and I'm thinking it's got to be one of the earlier MLW champions. It's not one of the more recent ones. Uh, there was a couple names that come up that I believe were MLW champion. I'd have to do a little bit more digging. Haven't quite figured it out yet, but obviously they wouldn't be putting this segment on if Matt Cross wasn't telling the truth at this point. He did at one time beat one of the former MLW champions. Now he wants Fa two in a championship match. And it worked for Cross just to go up and ask too. I mean, has the guy even had a match in MLW yet? And uh, oh. he goes up and asks and gets a title shot against Fa two. Well, Whether that's good news for him or bad news is, is irrelevant, really. He got what he wanted in this well, meeting with Duran. Actually, hold on, Papa Smokes. He gets it later on. We can't we can't reveal it yet till episode two tonight. He was just told that. Basically, you know, we'll think about it, but he didn't get it quite yet. 
We'll get there. Whoopsie. <laughs> Way to blow the show. Call me, smokes. <laughs> just call me the spoiler. Yeah. Uh, up next, we had the first official promo from 5150 uh, being led by Conan. We had Dr. Julius Smokes. Someone's trying to take that name away from you there, Papa. Uh, Slice Boogie and Rever- Rivera. Uh, they gave a strong promo here to introduce themselves. Again, the uh, language definitely not for children or the, for the week of art at the same time. But well-spoken individuals, they sound like they mean business and they sound like they're going to kick the shit out of guys. Yeah, I like the sounds of this faction too. They've been uh, in some other federations as well in the past, but uh, this is going to, it strikes me as kind of like an LAX uh, type uh a uh, faction with uh, three wrestlers and a manager and uh you know lots of backup even if they're in a tag team match and uh guys watching each other's back lots of interference and uh th- these guys are also street wise street smart guys so i assume there's going to be some uh high jinks and rule breaking in some of their matches and some uh jumps from behind and some uh weapons being involved and I think 50 on 50 is going to be a great fit in MLW and think of uh, some of the feuds they can get in with the uh, Contra and the Vaughn Ericks and lost parks and injustice. And there's all kinds of action they could have in, in this league. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic, but answer me this before we move on. Dr. Julius smokes versus Papa smokes and a smoke off. Who's taking the win? Oh, I got it all the way Munson. Well, if there's one thing I can win at, it's the, <laughs> A challenge has been thrown down there, Dr. Julius Smokes, if you're listening. Uh, so we go back to in-ring action next. Uh, we get to see the debut of Casey Navarro uh, taking on Gino Medina. I know when we reviewed the Battle Riot 3, Casey Navarro involved in there, but this is the first singles action we're going to get to see him in. I remember mentioning it to you when we were reviewing that show, if you knew much about Casey Navarro. I did look him up. He's a young guy. <laughs> he's 22, yeah. but he's got some years behind him. He started at a very young age. I think he's got about six years experience already at the age of 22. So, I mean, this kid is a, a kid on the rise. Um, his look is very unique. He definitely stands out. I can't deny that. But, I mean, it's a, it's a very unique look. And uh, the fans in Philly were loving him. They're digging him. So, obviously, this kid is very popular amongst a lot of the fans. Uh, taking on Gino Medina, who also great-looking kid, star on the rise and stuff like that. Uh, this was an opportunity to see Casey Navarro do what he does and – it, it, this was fast paced. It was electrifying and all that kind of stuff, but never looked out of place or silly or anything like that. I think these two worked it beautifully together. The reversals were nicely done. Um, Navarro, one, one thing I got to say, that suicide dive that he did to the outside for every suicide dive we ever see, this one came across like him flying out and giving a fucking clothesline to, to Gino Medina. And the bump was taken so well that none of it looked like they were cooperating at any point. It looked solid and it made sense. Yeah. And also that dive uh, stuck out to me as well. I mean, he hit him hard and they both went flying backwards from that. Very, very well done. Yeah. This was a Lucha style match. Uh, no surprise there. Both uh, Medino's kind of a medium-sized guy. Navarro, quite small. They announce him as 150 pounds. Yeah, 155, I believe, actually, to be exact. Yeah, small. yeah, that ain't very big. And in wrestling, <clears throat> in wrestling, they're usually adding on 10 to 15 pounds too. So who knows what how big this guy actually is? Yeah. I kind of had it uh, in my mind that well, this is kind of a drawback. But the kid walked out with with a great look it's an interesting look i i don't know what that is exactly but uh kind of a heartbreak kid type look and uh he had the pink leather and the sh- and the glasses and everything he walked out with a lot of confidence and a lot of swagger and he he, he uh, showed off to the fans nicely he looked like he's trying to be a star and that's the main thing and yeah this match was lucha it was very fast very technical um, there was, I have it in my notes here, at, at one point, Casey Navarro reminded me of uh, Leo Rush a little bit yeah. with his small size, and he was using that bottom rope as uh, so, as something to spring off of. I find it creative, I find it interesting, and, and it kept the pace up of that match too, and uh, lots of hurricanas, lots of flips, lots of uh, uh, back and forth and, and reversals between these guys. And, uh, and then uh, a very cool finish 
also for uh, the the eventual winner Medina. Um, he had that torture rack, uh, kind of had the guy backwards uh, over his back like a fireman's carry and into a slam. That was a pretty cool move. Yeah, cool. Um, this this was nicely done. And and as we've talked about reviewing MLW over the past couple of years, they've been debuting Gino Medina as maybe uh, looking for him to be, a, you know, kind of a mid-card star. But then he was doing some jobs and stuff too, and we weren't sure what we had in mind what sorry what the office had in mind for him but with uh this debut on here he gets a convincing win against a good opponent so maybe this is uh the push for gino medina that we've seen coming for some months now yeah i think again he did those did those jobs and stuff like that but now they've had that time to kind of allow that to rest a little bit then they come back give him that win against you know a debut in casey navarro they gave them a solid amount of time to work too so Casey Navarro doesn't look bad in defeat here. He actually looks quite excellent in defeat because he's losing to an up-and-comer, Gino Medina, who's on the rise. I mean, Casey Navarro will have his day against Gino Medina again, and he'll have his opportunities. Um, but again, just like Gino Medina, he's going to have a pathway to get into that point. And now, yeah, we're seeing that inevitable rise of Gino Medina, and that would be great, especially for the uh, middleweight division in MLW as well, too, giving some more... Uh, opponents for guys like Myron Reed or anybody else that could potentially be the MLW middleweight champion. Again, I don't want to make any speculations with the title on the line this Thursday as well, too. So we'll see what unfolds there. Okay, awesome. I like that match also. So from there, we had a promo, uh, Joseph Samael cutting in and uh, cutting a uh, classic Joseph Samael promo. I don't think I can ever do justice to how good this man talks every time I hear him talking. Every promo, not a word that I wouldn't say belong there. Everything is perfect from this guy when it comes to being on screen. He is probably one of the best on-screen personalities in professional wrestling today. Yeah, and MLW is just loving having Joseph Samuel as the sort of evil overlord of Contra, and he's constantly lurking in the background and possibly taking over the uh, video and audio feed in the middle of somebody else's deal. And uh, he speaks just in such great terms of apocalypse and prophecy and all that kind of scary stuff that uh, makes you, makes you just think that Contra is this global syndicate of wrestling terrorism, which it is, I guess. And uh, he does a great job in getting that over and uh, Sam Al, yeah, he, he can have matches and stuff too. But as the uh, as the promo man for Contra, he's just pure gold. Yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, from there, speaking of pure gold, we got the promo from Davey Richards. And again, this one wasn't as arrogant or anything as uh, TJP's, but it definitely was confident. Uh, Davey Richards talking about what he has with TJP in the past. Again, about his training, his return back to the ring and stuff like that. I mean... You believe him that he's going to go out there and give 110% against a fired up TJP and really hyped this match extremely well. And I like the way Davey Richards goes about things. He doesn't uh, have much of a gimmick or anything like that. He's just a hardworking veteran, uh, nose to the grindstone kind of grappler guy. And uh, we all, uh, or most of us are familiar with a lot of his work from the past with the American Wolves and what a great tag team wrestler he was. And uh, now we've got him uh, uh, as a single in, in MLW and uh, what a great thing that is. And, and yeah, he's just got that bare bones kind of promo style. He's just going to go out there and outwork you and out heart you. And uh, yeah, he, he filled the bill perfectly with this little promo. Being again now worked. I'm being now worked by my cat right now, but <laughs> yeah, they're, they're always loving being on screen these days. Uh, anyway, from there, uh, Tom Lawler ends up in the office of Caesar Duran, and this was just clever and fun and great in every sense of the word. Tom Lawler <laughs> coming in there, and Caesar Duran happy to see him, gives him a big hug, tells him he's been waiting for the opportunity to meet the great filthy Tom Lawler. And Tom starts explaining his accolades. Hey, why is it that Hammer goes and wins a battle royal and he's getting a championship match, but I beat three guys to win that Opera Cup last year. And what have I got? I got to do a 
uh, crappy backyard wrestling video <laughs> out in some stinky island. <laughs> He's making fun of his own show at this point, and I'm yeah, laughing at this. And then from there, Caesar drawn. Okay, okay, I, I, you're right. You know, you deserve a championship match. And Tom Waller, oh yeah, I got it, I got it. You're fighting Hammerstone next week on Fusion for the National Open Weight Championship. What a clever little twist there by Caesar Duran. And this is what I was kind of alluding to earlier, where he doesn't, it's him versus the wrestlers. He doesn't necessarily take the sides of anybody all the time, maybe once in a while, but it's not favoritism just towards the heels. He pulls whatever he thinks is right. Yeah, depending on how the wrestler comes up to him, too, is how he's going to react to it. And Nobody's been particularly uh, polite or respectful so far, and you, you're never going to expect that from Filthy Tom. So uh, Tom came in thinking he was going to pull a fast one over on Duran, and of course he had one pulled over on him. Still a nice title match and everything, but uh, yeah, it's it's probably no better uh, getting a match against Hammerstone than it is against Fatu. It's a pretty tough match, and you're probably going to get your ass kicked. You bet it is. And again, that's what uh, puts the potential Thursday night fight into uh, question. You know, it's been billed as title versus title, but now Caesar Drawn putting a wrench in the plan. It could end up being the Hammerstone walks into there without a championship around his waist. But we'll find that out in Alpha Part 2. Uh, in the meantime, we go straight to our main event. It's time. Davy Richards taking on TJP. Uh, this matchup is something of a uh, absolute delight this is the best way they could have come back with a main event for mlw fusion kudos to both these guys for just an awesome match this was a technically gifted match back and forth uh great reversals that were seen by both of them great groundwork from both these guys tjp controlled a lot of this matchup showing i believe it, the story here was told davy richards ring rust was showing and tjp trying to take advantage of it at times, his arrogance getting a little bit of the best of him. And in the end, Davey Richards was able to turn that into a victory for himself. But man, what a matchup. Great work. It told a great story. At times, you believe TJP was going to take this thing. I really, at a few times there, I thought it's over. TJP is going to win and everyone's going to be shocked as hell with Davey Richards' first match back. And it would be an MLW uh, fashion to do something like that. Pull a fast one by, by the fans. And, you know, nobody would be pissed off about it. I know I wouldn't have been. It would have been great either way. But this is very strong for Davey Richards. You can tell that MLW have a lot of faith in pushing him straight to the top. I believe that that is the plan. TJP, again, I, I would say an upper mid Carter for them, uh, definitely teetering in that area. So a big win there only pushes Davey Richards closer to that main event level. And hopefully we'll get to see him take on some of the guys in the main event spots here soon as well, pushing his start them a little bit further with MLW. Yeah. And I've, I've enjoyed TJP's wrestling in the past, but this match in particular was a really, really good one for him. You could see that he was calling it. Um, you could see that uh, uh, TJP led the first part of this match. Uh, a lot of nice chain wrestling, a lot of mat grappling, a lot of uh, holds being countered and reversed and such. TJP's just so, so slick. Like, he makes it look so easy and so graceful. You can tell he's a longtime veteran of uh, technical mat wrestling. He's, some of those reversals and some of those switchovers and some of those uh, float-over uh, moves to change sides and stuff, he's just, he looks like a butterfly. He's just so smooth and so perfect. This was like a little clinic, and, and you know when a guy can make something that difficult look that easy that he's a true master at it and i gained a lot of respect for tjp in this match he's a true technician he really is and what a great match uh tjp looks great in this and you know hopefully that'll continue to allow him to be in that uh, upper mid card spot to even t uh, playing in around with the main event guys if he went this well with a guy that they're going to push into the main event slots and stuff like that even at times showing that he was very capable of winning this matchup i believe there's an argument to be made for tjp to be in that mix as well too yeah and as we've seen tjp's already been there for the elevation of buku dao uh, tjp could have won that little feud and kept the newcomer dao uh, out of the picture kind of but he ended up doing the job in that in that feud to put over Dow, and that that looked good too because Buku Dow, another small guy, but came out and 
had a couple of great matches against TJP. Uh, Perkins made Dow look great in that series. And, uh, and yeah, that's what, what more can you want from an upper mid-level card guy, but to uh, elevate some of your newer stars and uh, get them on the road to uh, getting to the mid card themselves. Oh, you bet, man. This, this match had everything. And I, at this point in time, I'd have to say, looking back on 2021 so far, I would say this is probably in my top 10 matches that I have watched in 2021. And surprisingly so. I mean, I expected it to be good. I didn't expect to come away from it thinking that this was one of the best matches I've seen all year. I was very pleased with this matchup. Very pleased with this entire episode of Fusion. uh, Or should I say Fusion Alpha? Uh, This was a great comeback for MLW. Made me very excited to continue watching and just happy to see matches in front of fans again, Papa Smokes. Yeah, I, I agree with you that this whole episode was pretty good. It had a, a little bit of uh, what MLW is all about from the uh, bunkhouse match at the beginning with a little bit of silliness and a little bit of fun and some uh, violence too. But then a, a middle match with uh, Navarro versus Medina, just a nice uh, lucha exchange there. And then a technical textbook match at the end that had excitement and had uh, uh, all kinds of spots, all kinds of uh, swerves here and there. And then some of those moves they exchanged at the very end. I mean, Richards hit that exploder suplex on the apron on TJP. That was a huge bump and a really big moment in that match. Uh, Richards was trying to hit his double stomp off the top rope. He missed the first time, but got it the second time. Uh, brain busters, ankle locks, uh, all kinds of good stuff in this. And the, Momentum went back and forth and kind of like you alluded to a little bit earlier, couldn't really be sure who was going to win this, even with trying to figure out the booking of who they're going to push and stuff. It still wasn't clear in my mind and uh, who was going to win this until the three count at the end. You know that the booker and the wrestling company have done their job right when the fans aren't sure who's going to win. Yeah, a fantastic episode. So from there, we're going to move on to talking about episode two. So MLW Fusion Alpha 2 that took place. And uh, this one kicked off in some uh, quick, high-paced fashion. We started off with a match between the debuting Aramis and Ares. These are two luchas that have been brought over. Uh, They were brought over in the idea of the Azteca Underground with Cesar Duran. So this is kind of his signings. But before the match kicks off, Mods Kruger interrupts the feed and he starts cutting a promo, basically alluding to the fact that he's not done with Hammerstone. He's yet to finish with him and he will make sure that Hammerstone doesn't make it to the championship. He does not walk away with Fatu's title. So again, are we going to see Mods Kruger later tonight? That made me start to question. How about you, Pop Smokes? Yeah, that's just it. Is that we knew all along Mads Kruger hadn't been a traditional member of Contra. He was brought in by Joseph Samael for this specific reason of going after Hammerstone, protecting Fatu's belt from Hammerstone. So, I mean, that's been Mads Kruger's mission all along. He's not trying to get belts. He's not trying to get wins. His his only uh, purpose is to stop Hammerstone, put him on the shelf, get him out of title contention and away from Fatu in the world title. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, Kruger hasn't succeeded in his mission yet, and I don't think he's going to stop till he does. You bet he's not. Uh, So then we get back to the match between Aramis and Aries. Again, uh, very interesting. I believe it's Aries comes out the uh, king of strange style, I believe they announced him at. He's got that different glove with the eyeball in the middle of it. Uh, definitely not a traditional uh, Mexican luchador by any means. He's going with the face paint as opposed to a lucha mask itself. Uh, Aramis, of course, the baby face lucha here <clears throat> with the traditional mask and everything like that. Uh, this one, very athletic, great uh, reversals, great creativity. Again, a lot of high flying. So, I mean, again, it's nice that you don't see this kind of match from MLW over and over and over again, which is why it makes it work. Uh, the only thing I would say, maybe, especially for two new guys like this, it might've gone a little bit longer than I would have expected, especially for the kickoff match, but it was never boring. There was nothing boring about this match. It was always high paced, quick going, a uh, great win in the end for Aramis taking the uh, win over Aries and uh, both men looking extremely well, great debut in front of the fans, great viewing for the people watching on YouTube or wherever you're watching MLW these days. Uh, so 
great to get them out there. Great to see. My personal opinion, it could have maybe been shortened by a few minutes. Sure. And this match, also the pace of it was breakneck. Uh, this was another full-on Lucha match, which I really like that that Court Bauer brings in here and shows us two luchadors having a Lucha match, but in the U.S. and on U.S. TV. I like that it, we've spoken of the international flavor of MLW before. This is it on display right here. And I like both these guys. We saw both of them in uh, Battle Riot. Um uh, the, the Aries with the painted face that yeah that guy's got a real look and uh, an interesting thing he's kind of unpredictable and all that Aramis uh, more the traditional uh, uh, Lucha style guy maybe a little bit like the Laredo kid who we haven't seen back yet here since the restart but um, I felt like uh, the only thing that held this back, match back a little bit was uh, was the fast, fast pace of it. I feel like these guys maybe were young and nervous a little bit and going a little too fast because there were a small handful of spots where they looked a little confused. And uh, I, I know Ariz lost his place in the match a couple of times, which probably wouldn't have been noticed except that it was at such a fast pace that you can't help but notice when there's little pauses in it too. This is really splitting hairs, though. This is a pretty good match. And uh, I also wasn't sure who was going to get the push in this one. Uh, I kind of thought uh, Ariz with his painted face uh, and, and King of Strange style, I thought maybe he was going to go over. I wasn't sure who the, uh, the pushed guy was going to be in this, but uh, a lot of uh, creative offense. Um, that spinning backbreaker at the very end was quite neat. The sort of airplane spin into the sit-down power bomb, very, very nice. Yeah. Lots of good rope work, stuff off the turnbuckles in the corners and stuff. Uh, fine, fine win for Aramis. And then uh, did you notice the fans were throwing money in the into the yes. ring afterwards yes. in yes. traditional Mexican lucha style? Well, that means they really like the match, so... Yeah. Good one there, and good good on the Philly fans for uh, bringing that tradition up. Yeah, and the fact that, like, yeah, I mean, they've done their homework enough to know that that is a tradition with luchador wrestling and stuff like that, and to bring that forth. And I'm glad that, again, our great announced team, Rich Bocchini and St. Laurent, also allude to it as well. And that's yeah. what they're great at. They're great at explaining why things are being done. You're not questioning why they're being done. They make sense because the guys in the ring are telling a good story, while at the same time, the guys on commentary – are not trying to overshadow them. They're telling the story, unfolding it, letting you know the full details of it. Beautiful job. Uh, great way to debut these guys. Again, you, you got a point with the fast uh, fast pace. I would have maybe, yeah, again, slowed <laughs> down a touch, maybe cut a couple minutes off the ending. Beautiful. Either way, we're, we, like you said, we're splitting hairs. We're nitpicking for no reason. A great debut by a couple of young up and rising stars here in MLW. Uh, so from there we go to, again, here it is, Matt Cross going to talk to Cesar Duran, demanding that championship match. And now he's finally getting it. So next week, MLW Fusion Alpha Episode 3, we're going to see Jacob Fought to defend that championship against Matt Cross. One night away from the scheduled Hammerstone and Fought 2 match at Fightland on Vice TV. So again, we could be walking in to watching no champions in this big main event that's been built at this time. Because again, until the end of this night, we won't know if Hammerstone still has his belt. And until this week, Wednesday, we don't know if Fatu is going to be holding his. This could really shake things up here. And doesn't this give you the sense that uh, the that MLW is more of a sports-based league? Like they're not just booking their matches and, and showing their hand, so to speak, by saying, well, it's going to be Fatu versus such and such afterwards. No, they're saying the winner of the next match will face, you know, they, they're, there's, they're, they're not making it sure who's going to be the champion for some of these bookings too. So again, it just lends to the realisticness of the whole scenario. And I tip my hat to them for that. Yeah. You bet, man. It's awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's been all set up for next week's alpha three. And then we go back to in ring action and man, we've got a lot to talk about on this one. It's our boy Bud Heavy back on MLW TV. Glad to see Bud Heavy in the ring on this one. But oh shit, he's in trouble. But you got the suplex assassin, Alex Kane, and King Mo at his corner. Holy shit, these two look bad, man. They look like they're in mean business. 
I don't, I didn't uh, think Bud Heavy stood much of a chance and we were about to find out, unfortunately for Bud Heavy, he didn't stand much of a chance, but holy shit, was he over with the Philly crowd. It was great to see. And then at the end afterwards, when Kane's done with him walking back and he just, <laughs> this and Kane comes back to beat the shit out of him some more. Fantastic from start to finish. Kane is a fucking star, Papa Smokes. This guy looks great. He pulls off those suplexes like nobody's business. Throwing a big guy like Bud Heavy around. Man, this was fun to watch. I loved this. Yeah, me too. And from the from the very moments when Bud Heavy hit the ring, you can see he's worked on his look a little bit. He hasn't worked on his waistline at all, but uh, <laughs> he still, uh, he had the crowd chanting his name. That was cracking me up a whole bunch. And then, you know, usually when you see Bud Heavy in an MLW match, you know that it's going to be uh, probably a fast match, a squash match. And once I saw Alex Kane and King Mo come out, I, I knew it was going to be, but yeah. they actually let this match go on a little bit and uh, did a few spots. I don't think Bud got any offense in except for maybe a couple of uh, uh, useless blows to the stomach, which Kane just kind of shrugged off. But uh, still, it was a it, they were the idea of the match was to debut Alex Kane to show some of his suplexes. And that's exactly what happened here. Bud Heavy, a great seller, a great enhancement talent, I think. You know how interested I am in job guys, months, and I love watching the guys that really know how to do that well. And I'm counting Bud Heavy along in in that category too. And uh, this was a nice match. And then uh, it it put Alex Kane over and uh, with King Mo at ringside, uh, riling up the fans and all that, that was a nice touch too. But then uh, after the the inevitable pinfall by Alex Kane, uh, just like you said, Bud Heavy hasn't had enough. He calls them back to the ring with a flip in the bird a couple of times and ends up taking three more suplexes and, some of those facial reactions on Bud Heavy after taking those hard suplexes to the back of the neck, just just gold, uh, really good stuff. And people forget that uh, preliminary talent helps make a, a TV taping look good and helps to put over the stars and Bud Heavy really carrying some of the load in this match. It really did. A couple of things to mention. I loved King Mo standing at ringside with those cards with the amount of yeah. suplexes that Alex Kane has done. Yeah. That's a great touch and a good thing for King Mo down at ringside. I love that. Keep that shit up. I, I can really enjoy that. And again, Bud Heavy, dude, if you're listening, <laughs> we like enhancement talents because that's how we feel like we are right here. We're all about the enhancement talents on Ring Respect Radio. So just like we once invited our good buddy Robert Martyr on the show, Bud Heavy, I'm calling you out, friend. We want you on Ring Respect Radio next, so we want you to be our next guest. We'll reach out to you. Hopefully, hopefully you're listening in, and we can get Bud Heavy on here to rock and roll with the video bros. Fantastic. Let's do it. That's got to be the next guest, Bud Heavy. I love it. Yeah, that's what we're all about here. We're the, we're the enhancement talent kings right here on Ring Respect Radio. We'll get them <laughs> over, and then we'll talk the shit about them at, outside of it and make sure that they start to get noticed by the rest of the world because these guys have some talent behind them. Uh, so, yes, next up, we had another promo from 5150. This one even more vicious and more, I guess, to the point about uh, going after injustice and stuff like that, too, uh, who they're going to take down. This was this was excellent. I thought this was better than last week's introduction promo. It was a little bit different, but again, in that same format, same style, these guys mean business. I can't wait to see 5150 make a debut in MLW. Yeah. And they're de- uh, kind of debuting them through these little package promos here too. And yeah, the, you use the perfect term just now. They look like they mean business. They look like they're dead serious. They're going to come in as raging heels. Uh, I can see them coming in back jumping a few other tag teams and stuff. This is going to really mix up the tag team division a lot in MLW. And uh, I'm excited to see them. I watched a few of Slice Boogie's matches in the past, and uh, I can't wait to see them as a collective there with the manager as well. And uh, I think this is a great addition. Yeah, me too, man. Uh, So excited. And so, yes, another match has now been announced for MLW Fightland. We have, uh, Kind of talked earlier in the night about uh, Aries and Aramis. Uh, they were now going to be added to an MLW middleweight championship match against champion Myron Reed. That's also going to include 
the Japanese buzzsaw Tajiri. And man, that is one interesting group of guys in the same ring. Uh, Going to be some interesting clash of styles as well, too, in there. But I'm very curious to see how this pans out at the same time. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of three-way or four-way matches, but and but this this might be interesting because uh, yeah, like you say, there's a clash of styles. There's going to be two straight-up lucha guys, uh, the Japanese Buzz Saw, and then Byron Reed, who's kind of a little bit of a mix of all, all that stuff from American style wrestling to Mexican and Japanese styles and uh, yeah this will be one hell of a match to lay out to to make sure everybody gets some stuff in uh, it has the uh, the potential to be great it has its potential to bomb too but I, I have faith in MLW I think they'll do a good job of it and uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, descend into a big mess like a lot of those four ways do for sure and uh, after that, the, we're straight to our main event on this one, Papa Smokes. It is time for Filthy Tom Lawler to get his National Openweight Championship match against Alex Hammerstone. Uh, so this one, um, I, I don't know how to put this. I think I hyped myself up a little too much. There was nothing wrong with this match, but considering the two guys involved, I think I had bigger hopes for it. It was not bad. There was nothing wrong with it. It was a good match, but... It, I say it again. It was a good match. It wasn't a great match. It's not one I don't think I'm going to remember three, four months from now. I think it was a safe way to play in order to continue to keep Hammer strong going into Thursday night at Fightland. Sure, I can uh, I can get down with that too. It was a pretty good match. I like both the guys in it. I think both the competitors are really really good, but this match it lacked a certain zazz. Um, everything was went well in it. I noticed at uh, one point that that building must have been getting hot. The guys were so sweaty that some of the moves, they were slipping on them. Did yeah. you notice that a couple of those suplexes didn't have the same uh, effect because you could see the guys' hands were slipping on each other's chests and backs and all that stuff. Uh, everyone looked really sweaty in that match. Even the referee was sweaty, so it must have been hot in there. But uh, Well, even Hammer's the guys. Finished. Like Hammer's finishing move there too. Like it looked like it yeah. slipped a little bit, and he doesn't slip on that ever. Kind of thing. yeah, yeah. I wonder if that was the case because same thing. He still did the nightmare pendulum. It just didn't have the same uh, oomph that it usually has. A few other matches, or sorry, a few other moves I noticed went like that too. But this was still laid out nicely. I like the way Lawler uh, went after Hammerstone's legs. They made a little bit of a story of that, trying to take the big man's uh, support for, out from under him. He also did a whole lot of work on uh, Hammerstone's left arm, presumably uh, to defend against the nightmare pendulum. Uh, yeah, uh, Hammerstone was showing his strength a lot in this match. There was a cool part where he was sitting with his back in the corner and Lawler was standing with his feet right on the right on Hammerstone's neck like yeah. that. And Hammerstone stood up with Lawler standing yeah. on top of his chest. Wow. Yeah, I've never seen that one before. That was a cool feat of strength. And of course, Lawler falls out of the ring uh, over the top rope on the other side. And he was, his face showed the surprise of he'd never had anyone kind of bridge up and stand up out of a position like that before. Very cool spot. Very impressive. Um, yeah, uh, Lawler used uh, MMA tactics. He, he, I like some of the wrestling he does because you can see that's a guy that wrestles naturally. He doesn't have to think about it. If he's in a certain spot, he knows the four transitions he can do into different moves. He picks one quickly and does it. Um, very nice looking match. But yeah, there just wasn't a whole lot of oomph to this match. It didn't... Uh, you know, I don't think it was supposed to bring the house down. It was the main event of one of their TV tapings, but I don't think they had to make this sort of like a pay-per-view main event either. They, they could make this match that and book it differently or, or lay it out differently. But I thought this was pretty good and uh, it, it, it uh, achieved what they were going for. Uh, got hammer through safe. This, uh, this uh, one of his last uh, defenses, presumably of that open weight championship uh, before his big title match. And uh, 
we had we got to see Tom Lawler uh, playing the heel, playing the coward, playing the the scumbag wrestler, trying to get out of everything and, and trying to cheat all the time to win. And uh, yeah, and it didn't work out for him. He took that nightmare pendulum. He took the one, two, three, and that was the end of it. Yeah, you bet. And Hammer looking strong. And damn it, is he not like a rock star when he comes out to the ring? Um, he's got that music too. He's got Go With The Flow by Queens of the Stone Age. He comes out rocking too. He's got that look. He comes out head banging and looking like an absolute star. Man, every time that music hits, I, I do mark out a little bit. This guy is awesome. I can't wait for that match coming up with Fought 2. Again, he looks strong, defeating last year's Opera Cup winner, uh, Filthy Tom Lawler, who we know is a top contender in MLW. So, again, it uh, wasn't a perfect match, but, again, it was a good match and a, an overall good show once again from MLW. Again, can't ever complain about the great content that they're giving week after week absolutely free of charge. So make sure anybody who hasn't already go check them out check them out on youtube for mlw fusion mlw fusion alpha and again coming up vice tv and it is absolutely free this thursday night i sound like i'm a plug for mlw at this point but yes it's i believe 10 p.m eastern uh eight uh central time mountain time where the fuck we're in there papa smokes so 8 p.m our time anyway uh 10 p.m for the everybody out on the east free on vice tv so just go check out vice tv and watch this thursday night it is hopefully going to be mlw's biggest live audience that they've had in television history so it's going to be monumental for them yeah and this is the biggest title match they've ever had with the the longest build up the biggest uh uh lead up coming into this match they kept the the two uh combatants hammerstone and fatu they kept them away from each other for almost two years now and that, that's not easy to do in a smaller company with two of your main stars, but they've done it successfully. And uh, this has been built for a long time. It has a huge, big fight feel to it. Uh, Hammerstone is over as living shit in this company. And uh, man, it's going to be a huge match. And I haven't been excited about an actual wrestling match uh, upcoming in a long time like I am for this one. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, man. Can't wait for this Thursday night on Vice TV. Uh, but that's about all we've got. That's MLW Fusion Alpha 1 and 2. I believe we both enjoyed both shows as we always do. Thank you, Court Bauer and everybody at MLW for continuing to give us great product to watch every single week and giving us something awesome to talk about right here on the Video Bros Network. Uh, so again, for Ring Respect Radio, for Video Bros Network, for myself and Papa Smokes, who you can catch, calling the action for Prairie Pro Wrestling once again in live capacity here soon. Have a good night, stay safe, and take care. Dead South End. Gonna find you a man there wants to be your friend. If you dare to deny his wish, you'll be dead by dawn. So give him a drink and a smile and then move right on. Rednecks with white faces, don't go put